What is up, everybody? Chris Flick here, Chris Flick Podcast, episode number 102. The persona is a kind of mask designed on the one hand to make a definite impression upon others and on the other to conceal the true nature of the individual. That was said or written by Carl Jung. Now, I was talking to a few middle school dudes yesterday, and I'm like, guys, I feel bad for you. And they looked at me like that was the meanest thing I ever said. I'm like, no, not, not you two guys, sorry, just like the generation here, right? Everybody's on their phone, everybody's checking, everybody's trying to like get those posts to be the coolest post ever, right? You wanna be that cool person that gets all the likes, right? You kind of, cr and, then, and then because of that, the likes kind of feed you, and they feed the, a certain kind of behavior, and they're like, well, this is a type of post that gets a lot of attention. I'm gonna try to create more, and then the persona gets created, and it gets built, and built, and built, to the point that you have somebody like Anna Sororkin. I just watched a show on Netflix called Inventing Anna. And this girl, man, she moved from Germany, right? She's a, a wannabe German heiress, a wannabe, all right? She's an Instagram, social media type of influencer. She started schmoozing with certain people. She got herself a boyfriend, you know, a, tech, a techie dude that was trying to change the world in some weird and odd way. Um, she started rubbing elbows with the right people, man. High fives, handshakes, photographs, put this stuff up online. Became a world traveler because of her friendships that she created. And all of it was a con. She literally didn't even have a home. She had no place to go. Um, and at the end, man, she barely had even any other clothes on, on uh, available to her except for the stuff that was on her back, right? So her whole life was about acquiring merit, right? Acquiring likes, acquiring attention. That's all she chased. She became obsessed with that. She wanted to be this high profile person. She wanted to create a foundation. She needed these people that she was rubbing elbows with, that she was schmoozing with. She needed their money, she needed their influence, she needed their support. So what did she do? She started playing the game. She started depositing money into that uh, bank of social you know, merit, social currency. And that became her shtick, that became her persona. Eventually, all of this stuff came crashing down when the authentic Anna did not meet up with the persona that she created. Now the name persona, like Young said, it, it derived from a theatrical mask. Um, it was something that people put on and then they took off. There was also a period of time, uh, because they were playing a role, right? So they played the role, they put the mask on, right? That's kind of what she was doing. Every day she would wake up, put the mask on, and go into the world. Anna Sororkin became Anna Delvey. She even changed her name, created a big, wild story. But like all frauds, they kind of get figured out, right? So, as I'm watching this, I kept thinking about uh, pro wrestling, and people are wondering, why pro wrestling? Chris, you watch pro wrestling? Not necessarily, but back in the day, young Chris, man, 10-year-old Chris, was a fanatic, man. I had like 60 figurines. I watched, you know, I was, grew up at a time when like there was two competing organizations and they were going head to head, man. I would watch like, I would watch one live and then I would like VHS the other one and watch it the next day. And some of my friends were into it just as much. We'd be chatting it up, man. I was watching pro wrestling like a fiend. And back in those days, well, to me anyway, being a youngster, man, it was hard to differentiate between whether or not, uh, you know, whoever these people were, were, were real or fake. Um, you get emotionally wrapped up into these storylines. Um, you know, you think that it, it's like good versus evil, but the fakery that these guys were able to pull off was top notch. It's like they are the best, they could potentially be the best actors in the world because they get people to be emotionally invested in them so much more than anything that I think I know of. And this idea in pro wrestling, these storylines is called kayfabe. And kayfabe is this universe, right? This alternative universe that people, that these, that these guys live in, right? But, and it's, it's important, at least back when I used to watch it, for these guys not to break that kayfabe. It's like when you see a villain, right? We'll put that in quotes, out in public. That guy had to smack the pen out of a kid's hand if he asked for an autograph or push the, the piece of paper out, crumble it up and throw it at somebody, right? They had to live their gimmick. Just like Anna Savorkin tried to live her gimmick. The good guys had to take the pictures and sign the autographs and the bad guys had to live out their, their thing, right? But it, it eventually became to a point, you know, maybe in the 90s where these, um, these stories got exposed, right? Just like Anna did. 
Hulk Hogan is going to court. Say your prayers and take your vitamins gets exposed. He's taking steroids. He admits to taking steroids. Wait a second, Hulkster. What about saying my prayers and taking vitamins, man? That, that thing blew up on him. There was another funny story, too. There was two guys, I think it was in the late 80s. We got Hacksaw Jim Duggan, pro-America, waving his flag. And then we got the Iron Sheik, Iranian Olympian, who is the most evil villain in the world, according to some wrestling fans. Well, these two guys are gonna, they're supposed to be battling each other one night. But behind the scenes, they're buddies, man. They like to party. They had a bunch of drugs and alcohol in a car. They get pulled over by the cops. They both get arrested on their way to the show. Then the fans are like, whoa, wait a second here. These guys are supposed to hate each other. Why are they driving in a car together? Uh, over time, the fakery gets exposed, right? So, um, you know, and then they change it too. Now it's about entertainment, right? And people kind of allegedly still are supposed to know that, but yet they still get caught up in the fakery, right? Just, I mean, these gimmicks that these guys have, it's like Anna Sororkin, and it's like a lot of people that you see every day. It's the people that create this persona. It's that they invest so much of their time into what others think that it changes who they are. George Orwell once wrote that, it's a corrupting thing to live one's life in secret. So if you're not open with other people, if you're not living your life, the life that you wanna live, you know, if you're hiding something, if you're pulling back all because you care about the outside, about society, about family, about any other expectations placed on you, right? And these expectations are make-believe, right? What other people say, think, or do really shouldn't affect who you are as an individual, but yet they do. And problems start to arise when your persona and your true self collide. You know, there's been times when you start to figure out who you are, right? Say I'm, I'm a personal trainer, right, and I'm a young guy, and I see these people that are super successful, and you got this fake it till you make it situation here where you start imitating what other, people's do, other people do, right? And you start to um, almost steal their stuff. But over time, you start to realize that y you can't pull off being some of the more prominent people, right? Because it's not you, it's inauthentic, and people will see through that. Um, you know, you start to pick and choose then as you get experience, right? You take a little bit from this guy, a little bit from that girl, a little bit from this person, right? And then it, you become yourself as a coach. I think as an individual too, we all have these moments in our life where we try to, we have to try to sort out who we are, right? And we might experiment with different things. Uh, you know, we might try this, we might try that. And in the end, hopefully, uh, you know, you don't wind up in prison for it, right? But you find out who you are as an individual. Um, now, with social media and stuff like that, it's like we are trying to be something. that It's not even necessary for us to be that. Um, you live that inauthentic life. You, pl you start to place the needs of others ahead of you, right? Um, I mean, in what world, in what, in what reality should what other people think affect um, you, who you are, right? But yet it does, right? And it does to me too, believe me. It totally does. But we gotta kinda fight that. We gotta kind of, you know, put the emphasis on ourselves, right, and not others. We have to remember that there's no external judgment, whether whoever it's from, parents, loved one, sibling, boss, co-worker, whatever. No external judgment is, is worth compromising your own well-being. All right, so remember that. No external judgment is worth compromising your own well-being. When we worry about what others think of us, we start to negatively affect our health. That stress, those emotions, all of that stuff, it's gonna eventually wear you down. It's gonna break you down, all right? On top of that, you have that inauthentic feeling that every time that you go to bed at night, you're not being your true self, right? You need to free yourself from that. It's, it's basically a prison that you're kind of enchained in. You know, it's like a mental prison that you need to bust out of because if you don't, if we continue to chase these societal norms, these familial expectations, or any other unrealistic standard, you know, we're prisoner to the experience. We lose our freedom, we lose our self, we lose our identity. In order for us to break free from that, we have to break down the persona, we have to stop trying to be somebody that we're not, and get back to being ourself. How about that? Now in this Anna Sorokin example, she was a, a very likable person. She was able to get people to do things that are totally unbelievable, right?
But if she could, but she, she struggled, man. She was by herself. She had nobody, nobody. So all the Instagram likes that she had, at the end of the day, when she's sitting in a prison cell, she had nobody but her lawyer. And if her lawyer didn't have a heart, if he was just in it for the money, he wouldn't have been there for her. She had nothing, man. Her own parents didn't like her. Pro wrestling, guys, same thing. You got the gimmick and you got real life. Two separate entities. Today, kids, adults, people, we've got filters, we've got likes, we've got, con or, I don't even know anymore, emojis, and then we got the real life, man. It's that real life, that's, that's where you spend most of your time. That's where most of your work should be going, on who you are as an individual. Uh, be yourself, keep trying to make improvements, find out who you are, find your voice, find your, your, your heart, find your feelings, find whatever it may be, right? But find you, that's the most important thing. Hope you guys like this one. Chris Flick Podcast, man, it's out there. YouTube, Instagram. Sorry, YouTube. Like us on Instagram, Chris Flook, and also underscore Cornerstone Fitness. Same, with, same on Facebook. And then we got, you know, we're on Apple, we're on Google, Spotify, all that stuff, man. Hope you guys like this one. Peace, everybody.